Well, the August 28th Arizona primary is quickly approaching. And one of the big races everybody is paying attention to is the race for state superintendent of public instruction. Republican Diane Douglas currently holds that position and is running for re-election. A very crowded Republican primary. She joins us this morning to talk about this race. Thank you very much for taking the time this morning. And I guess the big question, why such a crowded field, especially when you're the incumbent on the Republican side? You would have to ask my opponents for that. What I can share with um, your listeners is that I ran on a very strong platform the first time and I was actually able to fulfill that for them. Getting new standards, stronger standards, Arizona controlled standards for our students. In addition to a lot of great work we've done within the department, saving taxpayers lots of money. Let's, let's talk about your term uh, over the past four years. How would you grade yourself and what would that be based upon? Oh, I'll give myself an A plus, 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 plus. <laughs> but seriously, I think one of the important things is candidates make lots of promises. I hear my opponents making promises that apparently they don't even know what the office is about because they're making promises under constitutional and statutory authority they can't do. But yet I ran, I ran to get rid of common core standards here in Arizona and I've done that and I would hope to the people out there that a politician keeping campaign promises is a very important thing to them. And let's talk about the standards because we continue to be at at the bottom of the barrel when you talk about education across the country. So that being said, as the superintendent of public instruction, how can you give yourself an A++++ considering uh, the state of our schools is, is still needs a lot of repair? We have amazing things going on in Arizona and um, it's a little frustrating with all due respect to hear the media always saying that our schools are terrible. But they are. They're, they're at the bottom of, of the... Depending which of the bottom five percentage. Depending which evaluations you look at. I mean, quite frankly, all due respect to them, I don't think Wallet Hub is the best organization to evaluate our schools. They came out with some rankings just last week, and then we had another one where it was showing uh, over 100 of our schools were among the top and got very high ratings. We've got five of the bet, four or five of the top rated high schools right here in Arizona. Let's talk about from the teachers who uh, themselves who are on the front lines. They walked out for six days in the mm -hmm. Red for Ed movement demanding uh, higher teacher pay and more funding for our, our uh, public schools as a whole. So I know you were against the walkout. Are you satisfied with the amount of funding coming into education? Well, first of all, I would say I'm the one for three and a half years who advocated loudly and strongly for more funding for our education system and for increases for our teachers. I conducted town halls all across this state, and that's what I heard from Arizonans. Number one, we want our teachers paid better. So I not only advocated for higher teacher pay, I actually came out with plans of ways it could be done. But I think what we honestly need here in Arizona is a funding source just for our K-12 system that supports it. Because we heard it with the lottery, we heard it with Indian Gaming, we heard it with Prop 301, we heard it with Prop 123. Oh, this is going to be for our teachers, this is going to be just for education, but the devil's always in the details and it never quite plays out that way. So that being said, are you in support of the Invest for Ed, uh, which will actually be on the ballot this coming November? I'm more interested in ways that bring money into our state, and there's ways to do that. One great idea I've heard, and I admit that it me needs far more discussion before we would actually implement it, but actually an excise tax, which would bring money from outside our state into our state to support our education system. Many Western countries, uh, states do that. And uh, I think it's something that's worthy to be looked at. The problem I have with Invest for Ed is that it only taxes a very small portion of our population and it taxes the job creators and that could undermine all of the 20 for 2020 plan if we hurt our economy and we don't keep revenues coming in. I'm very concerned about what it may do. And again, 
our education system belongs to everybody. Why should only one portion of the population be expected to support it? Okay, I, I got to ask you about Proposition 305. Of course, this is, has to do with the state school voucher program. Uh, should we, we expand it uh, to more than 30,000 students or should we do away with it? You're probably going to hate my answer because I get beat up for my answer, but of all my opponents, I'm in a very different position. My office has the authority to oversee that program and it's taxpayer money. I'm not taking a position, excuse me, it's Monday morning, it's way uh, too early. We, we go through it all the time. <laughs> but I'm not taking a position on it because I'm responsible for overseeing it fairly and people who hate it will say oh if she supports it then what is she doing with the money and if people love it and I say I'm against it they're gonna say what's she doing with the money how can we ever be sure so for this I stand ready, willing, and able to execute whatever the decision of the voters is. All right, I'm going to give you the next 30 seconds. You can speak directly to your public here, right in here. Tell them why they should vote for you in the August primary. We have done so much to improve education in Arizona. We got rid of the Common Core standards. Uh, we are working on new history and science standards to make sure our kids learn everything they need to know. We've saved tens of millions of dollars in the operation of the Department of Education and that's what we want to make sure we continue I want to continue doing for you because nothing is more important than the education of our children you can go to dianedouglas.com to learn a lot more and I appreciate your vote by early ballot or on August 28th well we thank you very much for taking the it's time it's a pleasure the thank best you so much to you. thank right. you we'll be right back